Honey, this is Neptunia, and you're listening to the St. Canard Files, a Darkwing Duck podcast. Don't forget to not use the ocean for your garbage dump, because if you do, I won't get mad. I'll get furious! Member of Team Justice Duck signing out. By the way, I'm not a duck. they say gemini's has split personalities well i wonder how is it for them when they're at two places at once well we kind of get that today with drake and darkwing anyway welcome to the saint canard files of darkwing duck podcast i'm your host will santana and i'm mike russo and hold the mayo you're not will santana you're tuscanini in a very bad will santana disguise (laughs) hey how's it going mike uh, not bad. Um, you know, spending a lot of time at home with not much to do, but I've been playing a lot of Animal Crossing. Man, thank God for that game. We're having so much fun with that, building our own island, catching bugs, catching fish. My daughter is playing the game. She's she's just about, like, she's got she's able to read now, and it's amazing, and it's just it's getting us through this really crazy times we're in right now. I'm enjoying that and, you know, just trying to catch various shows on Disney Plus and Food Network. We love watching Food Network, but just trying to keep busy. How about you? Uh, Man, tonight's a big night, man. Uh, I'm missing it right now, but I'll catch it when it replays. Uh, Today is part three and part four of the Michael Jordan documentary. Uh, I think it's called The Last Dance, and I've been loving it because uh, I get in a lot of those debates on the sports groups with who's the GOAT between Jordan and LeBron, and Mm -hmm. Jordan's my GOAT even though I hated Jordan. So <laughs> I'm really excited, but I'm going to have a hard time watching the part of the documentary when they show him beating on my Knicks. Oh, that's going to be so brutal to rewatch that and relive that. But um, anyway, Mike, though, uh, where can the people for the first time listening to us today, uh, where can they find us at, man? All, all sorts of places. We're on Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, uh, Apple Devices, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, Pandora, iHeartRadio. You can speak into your Amazon Echo and it'll play the latest episode for you there. We are on YouTube and we are always adding new content to YouTube, videos and all sorts of fun stuff. Please subscribe to us on YouTube. Mm-hmm. We're everywhere. I mean, I'll throw out two other podcast apps that we just learned about, Overcast and Podbean. We're on everything. It It's so easy to find us. And if you're just joining us for this episode... Have a good, this is a good one. So please enjoy. Okay. Well, Mike, uh, I got three shout outs I want to give. And today I'm going to give it to all three of them been on YouTube, but one of them has expanded beyond YouTube. So I got to give that this, I'm going to save that person for last. Uh, the My first shout out is for Aaron Chappelle or Chapel. I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but thank you, Aaron. You've been very active on our YouTube channel. And uh, my second one is for Eric Scheidel. Uh, so sorry if I mispronounced you guys' names. Uh, y'all be killing me with these last names, man. And then last but not least, uh, to Cindy T, Mike. Um, mm-hmm. You're not very active on our YouTube and Instagram, but Cindy T has been very active, showing us a lot of love, man, on YouTube, Instagram. And she also gave us a five-star review on Apple. So mad love to you, Cindy. Appreciate it, man. Like I always say, if you guys listen to us on iTunes, Please, please rate us and review us. That, that's really cool of you to do that if you can. Um, thank you, Cindy, for doing that for us, though. I don't know how many people have done that because I don't use iTunes. But if you guys do, please please rate us. That's awesome. Hey, Mike, did you see my latest post about Apple and iTunes? Yes, I did. I'm going to some detail for people who didn't see your post about that. Yeah, man, we broke into the top 100 for a film interview podcast, even though we're in like 
about six or seven categories, but for that specific category for film interviews, we broke into the top hundred. <laughs> uh, I know we still got a long way to go for like top 25 or something, but just to get in that 100, man, uh, that was big, man. I was really excited between, to see that. Between that and how many followers we have over on Facebook, finally, finally mm -hmm. getting there. All right, guys, I know y'all want to hear the re our review uh, for Adopt the Con, which is today's episode, but I wanted to share a quick little story. I'll make it really short so we can get into today's episode, uh, and it has to do a little bit with the episode today. When I was a kid, Mike, um, we were living in Fort Benning, which is right next to Columbus, where I live now. We, my father was in the military, and uh, there was a baseball team in Columbus. It was a minor league baseball team. One, uh, first, it was the Columbus Astros, so they were an uh, affiliate of the Houston Astros. And, you know, baseball is really big in Latin countries and stuff. So, mm -hmm. you know, like sometimes they would get players who didn't speak English or English was their second language and stuff. Right. And my dad would do like this uh, program that they had. It was like uh, adopting a player. You know, the players did not sleep, uh, stay in our house or anything. But my dad would like bring them over on, you know, nice. They had no games or after the practice and stuff, he would take them out to eat so they can find some Spanish food and help them look like. So they can learn their way around the city and meet people in the community and stuff. Um, and it was really cool because we used to get jerseys and baseballs and bat souvenirs, all kinds of stuff. We get tickets to the games for free and, you know, hang out in the locker room. It was a really cool thing. And one of them actually became my godfather. Shout out to you, Carlos Martinez. I still love you to death. And you made it to the majors and played with the Cleveland Indians and the Chicago White Sox. Uh, he's most famous for getting uh, hitting the home run off Jose Canseco's head. So mad love to my godfather, Carlos Martinez. Love you to death, homie, even though he may he rest in peace but uh that was just a quick little story i wanted to share you know my dad adopting those uh hispanic players it was really cool um so mike let's go ahead um what's our production air date order for this episode all right this one originally aired thursday november 7th 1991 and i definitely want to mention this is the only episode that aired that week Mm -hmm. The reason why is because this week is when the two separate Darkly Dawn's The Duck episodes first aired on the Disney afternoon. Mm. They would have aired the uh, this week in November. I don't know if it was Monday or Tuesday or Tuesday and Wednesday, um, but this is where those two episodes air. So anybody who's looking at the episode order on Disney Plus and sees those two Darkly episodes right before Adopticon and thinks Disney screwed up somehow, nope. This is where <laughs> those two episodes actually aired. Okay. So, that, so that's why the next episode is another Saturday morning one. Okay. Now, Adopt the Con. This is our second Tuscanini uh, Disney Afternoon episode? Uh, yes. This is the second Tuscanini one to air in syndication. Out of um, four so far we've done. The other two were Saturday morning episodes. Mm -hmm. um, this is actually Tuscanini's last episode in production order. Um, this is 43rd in production order. Um mm -hmm. And the first Tuscanini episode I may have mentioned already has not even aired yet because apparently I have heard there were production problems with the French, uh, the France studio. And that one's not going to air until February 1992. Ooh. So, but this is the last Tuscanini one they wrote. And it's okay. actually my favorite Tuscanini episode. Yeah. Uh, before you get into the writer writing and all that, Mike, I, I do want to mention, I don't think this is a tier one episode, but I definitely feel this is like one of those slept on. I agree with that video you put up. This is a very slept on episode that people don't talk about, you know? Yeah, I'll explain why in a second. OK, um, go ahead. Though. Keep going, though. So our story editor is Dwayne Capizzi. And our writer is uh, Steve Roberts again. This mm -hmm. is his last Darkwing episode. He, the other episodes he wrote um, are Negaduck and Night of the Living Spud, two exceptionally strong episodes. And this is my favorite of the ones he wrote um, from a writing standpoint. I think I like Negaduck a bit more for the visuals. But this is just a really funny episode. Mm -hmm. The writing is so great. All the voice actors, especially Jim Cummings and Kenneth Mars, are really doing a fantastic job. It's just a really clever, fast episode. Like, things happen super, super fast in this episode. Mm -hmm. And it's, like you said, slept on, underrated, nobody talks about. But it's just really funny from the first line of dialogue to the very end. This one is super, super funny. It was animated at Sun Wu. 
Salute. And I don't think there are any scenes where it's like, wow, that was a great bit of animation. Mm-hmm. And that's fine because it's Sun Wu. We don't really expect that. But the drawings are good. I think Sun Wu kind of gets how the characters are supposed to look by this point. Mm-hmm. And I think the animation and the snappy writing really work well together. From this point on, a lot of Sun Wu episodes are going to be really good because the writing in those episodes are fantastic. Um, it all starts here, though. I think from here on in, we're just getting so many great Darkwing episodes coming up. All um, right. So let's start. I mean, this is such a good one. I'm going to have so much to talk about in terms of just the writing and dialogue. Um, <laughs> let's go. All right. What is, so a, we... what all is right. the very, very first thing you see, Will? Oh, we got Darkwing. He's in the courtroom, and the judge is, uh, he's asking him who he is and everything. And then Darkwing is cross-examining Tusker Nini. I love how it starts. State your mm-hmm. name. Darkwing <laughs> Duck. State your occupation. Terror, that flaps in the night. Oh, it's great. <laughs> this court scene, it goes a mile a minute. And it's like, Tusker Nini is so funny in this episode. I've said it before. I don't love the character, but he's really funny here. This is not my favorite Tusker Nini episode, but this is my favorite episode with him in it. That uh, I said that so wrong with where he, the way he's portrayed. I get it. Yeah. Okay. But uh, anyway, let's keep moving on. Uh, Darkwing's cross-examining him for about mm-hmm. a bank robbery, and Darkwing presents all kind of evidence, which is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, he's got so much evidence. He's like, I caught this ham robbing a bank, and Tuscanini says, I object, Your Honor. I am not a ham. And <laughs> and Darkwing, I love the bit where he's showing off all the evidence, and he said, all the eyewitnesses, he opens the door, and they all go, hi, and he closes the door again, because <laughs> everything's moving so fast. Yeah, and, it's going way fast, man. And really quick, before we keep knocking out this plot, we have a new character in this episode. We have a judge, mm-hmm. and the judge is voiced by uh, David Doyle, um, who's no longer with us. Uh, David Doyle was born in 1929. He Ooh. is most famous for playing Bosley in the original Charlie's Angels. Oh, ah, okay. In terms of animation, uh, for Disney, he worked on Tailspin, Goof Troop, Bonkers, and Quack Pack. He is most well-known in terms of cartoons for playing Lou Pickles, uh, Tommy's grandfather, in Rugrats. Oh, okay. And he played that role until he died in 1997. Mm. So um, rest in peace, David Doyle. I like this judge. It's not a great character, but he does what he's supposed to do. And yeah. this judge, this judge has quite a temper. Yeah, man. But uh, anyway, the penguins come in, Mike. I love these penguins. (laughs) And they're defending uh, Tusker Nini. They're his, uh, I guess, his defense attorneys. Yeah. (laughs) And but, you know, the penguins don't speak. So we get a game of charades. Yeah. um, And he's not good at this. Tusker Nini, they have not rehearsed this. (laughs) <laughs> One comes in with a penny with a hole in it and puts it over his head. Tuscanini has no idea what that means, but it means he's innocent. Get it? Innocent, mm-hmm. innocent. And then the penguin pulls out a stuffed sheep. And again, Tuscanini has no idea what this thing is. The soundtrack even plays a sheep buying when, when the penguin pulls it out. Tuscanini goes, a wildebeest, a water buffalo. He has no <laughs> idea what it is. And then the penguin brings a frame. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I framed your honor. Darkwing Duck framed me. And this is so funny, Will. Darkwing grabs the frame out of the penguin's hand, jumps on Tuscanini with so much force, he destroys the entire witness stand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then the judge takes his gavel. He smashes it down so hard, the entire judge's bench explodes. <laughs> <laughs> and then just all hell breaks loose in the courtroom. Everyone's on top of each other, and it's just... Oh, it's so fun. It's like, it's really funny. Yeah, but and, unfortunately uh, for Tusker Nini, though, he, he's found guilty. But Darkwin gets slapped with a restraining water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then we go, we get a, a cut scene, we get a transition, and we're at the Mallards. Mm-hmm. And uh, Herb shows up first, and then uh, Binky shows up. Yeah, let me just go through what happens here, because the timing on this whole thing is great. Mm-hmm. First, Herb comes in. This is the first time we hear about Quackerware. What's Herb's job? He sells Quackerware. Mm-hmm. He comes in, and it's rapid fire. Like I said, this episode moves super fast. Herb comes in, does a really quick spiel. Drake buys a Quackerware, pushes him right out the door, 
and says anything to make Herb Munnelfoot shut up. <laughs> Doorbell rings. Binky comes in with the um, clipboard, wants Drake to sign up for a program. Drake grabs a clipboard, signs it, gives it back to Binky, closes the door, and says anything to make Binky Muddlefoot shut up. Yeah, if down. only he knew what he signed up for, though. <laughs> then you hear the door, the, the door the, I guess they knock on the door again. And you hear the Muddlefoot theme play. You know what's going to happen. And Drake says, what can be worse than the one of the Muddlefoots? He walks over to the door. You know where the joke is going. Oh, he yeah. opens the door, and both of them are standing there. Will, what did he sign up for? Uh, for the Adopticon program. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and who does Herb introduce him to? To Thug ne- a- ne- Neanderthal. Did I pronounce Thug ne- that? Yes, Thug Neanderthal. Yup, mm-hmm. a convicted felon. And Darkwing and Drake learns that, yeah, he signed up for that program too, and his convict will be there any minute. Yep, he's coming momentarily. <laughs> mm-mm, mm-mm, and Drake is not happy. He nails the front door shut. Yeah, he tells Goslin not to answer it, but he forgot to tell one other person, Mike. He screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who else lives in the house? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he screwed that up. So the doorbell rings, and who opens it, Mike? Launchpad opens it, of course, and it's the judge. This judge, he gets around. This judge doesn't just sit on the judge's bench. He does everything, as we'll see. So the judge comes in and uh, tells, you know, he congratulates Drake for adopting a convict, pulls out a long, long list of rules, um, which includes the convict needs to take up a trade. Mm -hmm. And if he attempts to harm the convict or destroy the contract, he's going to jail, just as Drake tries to set fire to it. Mm -hmm. And he gives him a panic button, which is just a big red circle. (laughs) <laughs> which which comes in the hand later. It comes into play although, later. Although it makes no sense because it isn't attached to anything. Uh-huh. All right, so en- enough procrastination. Who is the convict? Uh, it's Tuscanini. It is Tuscanini. And um, I think this might be one of the only times we see their dining room. Yeah. They're all having dinner together. And Tuscanini's trying so hard to act like such a nice guy. And I'm pretty sure, like, the idea of the episode came first about adopting a convict. I mm-hmm. think Tuscanini's in this episode because he's the only villain who could really pull this off. Yeah. Can you picture, like, Megavolt? And they couldn't do this with Negaduck. Megavolt and Quackerjack are too nuts. And they couldn't have used Steelbeak. So mm-hmm. Tuscanini works in this episode. He really does. He really does, man. And he can't even say Darkwing Duck's name without getting angry. <laughs> <laughs> Darkwing Duck. Um... And Goslin's PO'd because they got a really lame criminal. Yeah. And Tuscanini's like, he's telling all kind of false stories and stuff during the dinner. Like, nobody's buying it. <laughs> no. He doesn't know that he's talking directly to Darkwing Duck. Yeah. And then um, what, what happens? Drake starts to set traps and stuff in his room and stuff. And uh, while everybody's watching your favorite show, Mike, Pelican's Island. Yeah, Drake's upstairs setting up the bed, and he's like, ta 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 He's so <laughs> mad. He drops the piano on the bed. Goslin goes, hey, then we can visit you when, when you go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, they're watching uh, They're watching Pelican's Island. We get, we get to see a little bit of it. You yeah. know, I feel like these scenes of the characters all sitting around actually watching TV, and you're seeing what they're watching, I feel like that had to have been inspired by The Simpsons. Because the Simpsons was the o- the Simpsons was the only show that did that, mm. showed you what the characters were watching on the TV, mm. and it definitely feels very Simpsony. But anyway, they're watching Pelicans Island, and the, the skipper gets eaten by a barracuda. <laughs> um, and um, so Tuscanini has to learn a trade. Who yep. comes in? The penguins. Yep, penguins come in, all three of them. Um, and they, they, they're carrying instrument cases, and Drake thinks they're up to something. You know, yeah, that, he, those can't be instruments. Yeah, he's not buying it. Mm-mm. He opens the cases, and what's inside of them? Instruments. <laughs> Can you play Lady of Spain? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but um, we know Tuscanini is not innocent. We know he's mm-hmm. not reformed. Yeah. He has a plan. Mm-hmm. He has a plan. What's in the instruments, actually? If Drake had looked a little bit harder, what would he have found? He would have found, uh, what was it, a recliner, some traps. Well, not really traps, but it was, like, stuff to, like... Uh, tools. It was tools and stuff, but it was to fake uh, Drake, to, to yeah. bamboozle him. 
their whole plan. They're building like a catapulting chair. They're digging a hole in the closet with a trap door. And did you notice when they open the closet, there's a human skeleton inside of it? Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> so Drake has skeletons in his closet. <laughs> Great joke I didn't get as a kid. Yeah, I didn't get it as a kid either. Mm -mm. Um, but I love this little bit. Drake knows Tuscanini is up to something, and he hears a jackhammer coming from the bedroom. He knocks on the door, and Tuscanini opens it just a crack. He's wearing a hard hat. You mm. know something's going on. And Tuscanini, <laughs> Tuscanini says, we are tuning up, and closes the door. <laughs> but Drake still's um, not buying it. He's still not, not buying all. it. <laughs> Drake wants to see what's going on up there. Yes. Now, there's a weird animation thing that happens that you pointed out to me that I've noticed, too. Mm -hmm. Can you explain it? Okay. Drake is outside of the house, and he's hopping up and down, trying to see inside the window, trying to see what Tus Tuscanini's up to. But in one shot, when he's jumping up and down, all of a sudden, he's inside of the house. I think they were trying to go, like you said, all, you know, trying to go for a reflection, but it was poorly animated where he, it looked like he's in the house. They should have done something to make Darkwing, I mean, Drake look a little like lighter as if it is a reflection. Mm -hmm. But you're right, the way they animate it, it looks like he's in the house. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And um, he also grabs a pair of leader hose and then tries to like grabs a grappling hook and see what's going on. But the frame of the window comes out of the out of, off the wall and he crashes to the ground. And um, Tuscanini goes into the trap door in the closet and the penguins fake Drake out by doing hand puppets of a band yeah. on a shadow on the wall. So Drake's like, maybe he did start a band. Um, but Launchpad tells Drake, someone's robbing a bank. Who is it? It's uh, supposedly Megavolt. <laughs> yeah, it's supposedly Megavolt. But we get a load of quote-unquote Megavolt. Who is it? It's Tuscanini. So Darkwing's chunkiest villain is dressed as one of his skinniest villains <laughs> <laughs> he really fills out that costume and instead Dark of a battery not his, buying it no yeah. did you see what he has on his back it's a, it was a trash up, can wasn't it it's a beaten up trash can like <laughs> tuscanini didn't even try um darkwing shows up he, he starts his entrance he says i am the slug that crawls and then he realizes it's not mega vault mm -hmm. and the, you know he says what i said when the when we did the episode at the beginning he goes hold the mayo you're not mega vault you're Tuscanini in a really bad Megavolt disguise. Okay, I love this line from Tuscanini so much. He goes, I am not Tuscanini, and this is an excellent disguise. <laughs> it's like, well, you just kind of gave yourself away. Yeah. <laughs> what happens next? Uh, he is, uh, no, no, no. Darkwing, uh, he, he dares him. He threads, He says, hey, go ahead and try to uh, shock me. He's got the be He's got this great come at me bro pose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's like, I dare you to go ahead, go for it. Like, come shock me. And uh, but Darkwing pulls out his gas gun before he really gave Tuscanini a chance, though. He pulls out the gas gun and shoots it. No, no, there was a vacuum. There was a vacuum. Yeah, first. instead of the electro gun, it's mm -hmm. a hand vacuum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So then Darkwing pulls out the gas gun and he shoots it, but uh Tuscanini's vacuum sucks up all the gas. Yeah, then it explodes. Mm -hmm. And then Tuscanini gets away in his trap door. And Darkwing thinks he, he knows where Tuscanini is going. And he, he knows, knows a shortcut. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, he has no, but he has no idea Tuscanini has that escape route back to the house. Mm -hmm. So Darkwing gets there, slaps the panic button on the wall, smacks it. The judge shows up. What's the judge wearing? What was he wearing? Was he wearing a, uh, a bathrobe or something? No, scuba gear. Oh, he was wearing scuba gear? Well, the wetsuit and the um, the flippers. Okay. He walks in. He's like, Darkwing, I told you to stay away from Tuscanini. Uh, yeah, but that's because Tuscanini's not here. He opens the door and you see Tuscanini surrounded by instruments. Yeah. <laughs> God, and, God by him. Yeah, he's like, you're trying to frame me again. And Darkwing jumps on him and starts to beat him up. And Tuscanini does this whole soliloquy about how he's reformed and he's he's done his he's done his penance and he's he's a good person now. And this other I love this bit too. Tuscanini says, "But that was such a long time ago." And Darkwing peeks into the frame and says, 
that was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that's it. Darkwing blew his restraining order. Mm-hmm. Where is he going? He's getting locked up. He's going to the slammer. Guys, if you are keeping count at home, this is the fourth time by air date he's gone to jail. <laughs> and still not the last time. Mm-hmm. Okay, I really, really love this whole jail sequence. I really, really do. It's so funny and so well-timed. Goslin plays into the episode a bit more now. She hasn't done much. And what's the first thing she brings Darkwing to dig out of the jail cell? Was it the potato peeler? No, it was No, that was the second one. Yeah, the chainsaw was the first one. Then it was the potato peeler and then the dynamite, right? Every time Darkwing tries to escape, it's seconds after Launchpad shows up with the bail money. Mm Mm-hmm. First, it's $500, then it's $5,000, and then, of course, you have the dynamite, which Darkwing hides under the mattress and he screams for help. Launchpad shows up with the five uh, fifty thousand dollars and finally they bail him out. Darkwing runs out of that jail cell as fast as he can, drag Launchpad behind him, and the judge goes, and don't try any funny stuff. Bam! <laughs> the bomb goes off. Yep. But, <laughs> Second, but then- oh, it was really well-timed. Yeah, but then we end up back at the Drakes and, uh, well, at the Mallards, not the, at Drakes, but we be- end up back at the Mallards, and Drake asks his, uh, LP, how did you come up with the bail money? <laughs> I, you know what? This is such a great payoff for the whole jail thing. They were mm-hmm. smart enough to explain where he got the money from. Yeah, Drake goes, by the way, where'd you get the bail money? They walk <laughs> in the house, and there's nothing in the house. Launchpad had to sell all the furniture. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So they have to trick Tuscanini. They have to beat him at his own game. So Tuscanini comes home, goes into the kitchen, and he sees Dark Drake, Goslin, and Launchpad. Yep. They got they got visors on. They have those armbands. They have uh, weapons with them. I guess like tools and stuff. And um, they say that the Mad Duck Mallard gang. And Drake's <laughs> doing this really ridiculous like Brooklyn accent. Mm-hmm. And um. And they're like, you know, we're, we're planning to break into the Mint. And, you know, Goslin's like, why doesn't Tuscanini help us? Because mm-hmm. Drake says the only thing they don't know is how to get in to the bank. Yep. And Tuscanini's like, no, 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 no. You know, I can't. Um, and Drake's like, you know, we're going to steal Ten zillion dollars. Now, if you've watched my, you know, top five underrated episodes, this is the clip I used. And Tuscanini goes, "That's right. You see, I am a reformed." Uh, how much did you say? Drake comes in, ten zillion dollars. And Tuscanini, my favorite Tuscanini line ever. He goes, "Not that reformed." <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. He shows everybody his escape route. You know mm-hmm. how they plan to get in there. Um. This is the so, last we see of the penguins, though, ain't it? No, yeah, they're done after this. We, we see them in the first Tuscanini episode that's going to air a while mm-hmm. from now, but this is the end of the penguins for the entire episode. Um, yeah. So Drake has a whole plan, which involves Launchpad coming with him, setting the silent alarm, getting back in the tunnel, sealing it shut, and having Goslin stay behind and watch the penguins. But Drake goes through this plot so fast, they don't understand what he says. Yeah, it gets so, all screwed up. <laughs> but um, they're not going into the bank as themselves. Yeah, they're they going do? as a uh, Bushroot. Boy, Tuscanini keeps picking the most unlikely villains to dress up as. <laughs> um, so they get into the bank. Goslin, who sh- followed them in, hits the actual like alarm alarm, and Launchpad seals the escape route shut before they can even get in. Yeah, that tunnel's gone. <laughs> and Launchpad is so happy. Drake, look, I sealed it shut. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the cops show up. The SWAT team shows up, opens fire. Tuscanini realizes he's been had. Yeah, he felt, he, is, yeah, he felt, yeah, he felt he was set up, but they blame Darkwing. Yeah, Goslin, very quick thinking, blames Darkwing. Mm-hmm. And he has them at the bazooka. He's got, he pulls out a whole bazooka at them. Oh, this Tuscan- is so funny. That bazooka and, and that seal tunnel is going to come back to play. Oh, it was hilarious. <laughs> Tuscanini is not fooling around in this episode. Mm-hmm. He has a whole bazooka. And a great little thing Tuscanini does. He goes to the window and he goes, this is Bushroot. 
a plant guy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> he keeps blowing his cover, but no one believes him. Um, but here's the thing. He wants the SWAT team to hand over Darkwing. And you mentioned being in two places at once when we started this episode. This is where it comes into play. Yeah. Is this the only time this ever happened where Drake and Darkwing had to be at the same place or, you know, at the same place at the same time? This is the... I'm, I'm trying to think, and I really think this might be the only time they really do this idea. Which is really good. I really like that they did that. Yeah. Um, so Drake manages to get, because they're tied up to chairs. He manages to squeeze out of the ropes. And he says he learned it from a conscientious contortionist from Constantinople. I don't know if I believe that, but that's <laughs> Darkwing. Um, so there's this whole thing now. He has to get out of the bank and change into Darkwing. Boy, this is uh, this this part's insane, isn't in it? Four, but he had to do it in 45 seconds. Yeah. So <laughs> he climbs out the window, forgets he's on the top floor. So he crashes to the ground. He's chased by a guard dog, gets electrified by a fence falls into an alligator-filled moat, and then, so my daughter's watching this episode with me. After he comes out of the moat, he sees the Sahara Desert. My daughter, Helena, goes, what? That doesn't make sense. This is a funny episode. A <laughs> desert. <laughs> poor Darkwing. <laughs> and poor Darkwing, yeah, he has to do all of this. I don't I don't really get why, because when he's as he when he gets through the desert, he's literally right in front of the bank. Yeah. So I don't know I don't know why he couldn't go around. And um so he, he shows up, but then the judge wants to see the hostages. Yep, so he's gotta go back as Drake. He gotta go all the way back through all that again in Fort what, what was it? 20 seconds or something? 15 yeah, seconds? The, yeah, because Tuscanini is like, he's he's giving them a time limit. Mm -hmm. Are we, we going to shoot the hostages? Yeah. And uh, so Drake comes back, and then Tuscanini is like, I, I want to see Darkwing again. So he has to do it all over again. <laughs> and this time he crawls in with a snake wrapped around him, and his lower half is being eaten by a guard dog. Mm -hmm. And the judge goes, no, I want to see the hostages again. And Darkwing is like, I go in first or I'll break your gavel. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, he's insane. had enough. It's insane that they set this whole thing up with, but it works because the episode is so loony mm -hmm. that all this thing with the desert and the alligator filled moat, it works because the episode is so ridiculous. I really think it's hilarious. So Darkwing gets to go in. Tuscanini lets Goslin and Launchpad go. Mm -hmm. And, um, Interesting dialogue here between Tuscanini and Darkwing. Don't know if you really if you really caught this. Tuscanini says, I've been written out of the show. And Darkwing says, hold on, Tuscanini. I'll talk to the producer. Mm -hmm. Isn't it funny how this is Tuscanini's last episode? Yeah, by production order, yep. And he says, I've been written out of the show. I really have to wonder if they knew going in they were done with Tuscanini when they wrote this. Mm-hmm. Because that dialogue is really on the nose. Yeah. So Tuscanini, you said something pays off with the bazooka. Yeah, he point he he accidentally has it backward and mm -hmm. he shoots he shoots the sealed tunnel. Yeah. <laughs> like you he can, does. Yeah, he realizes he should have thought of that before. <laughs> Just as the judge comes in, mm -hmm. I gotta say, like I said, this judge is everywhere. He's a judge. He apparently is in charge of the jail, which. That's not a judge's job. And he's a part of the SWAT team, too. <laughs> this guy. He comes in. Tuscanini gets into the tunnel. Darkwing follows him. The judge follows him. They all end up back at the house. Mm -hmm. And it's obvious that Tuscanini, you know, obviously he wasn't reformed. He was behind everything. But even though he's clearly screwed, the last thing Tuscanini says is, Darkwing Duck framed me? <laughs> 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 oh, poor... <t> <laughs> The Tuscanini goes out goes out really poorly. Um, and that's it. Tuscanini is done. Terms yep. production order. We are not going to see him again. Um, so, yeah, your victory served. And um, we have to we have one loose end to wrap up. Yeah, we got Drake. He's sitting in the house and he's reading the paper. He's loving it. Tuscanini. It, it's a good closure for uh, Tuscanini with the shot of, the, of him in the newspaper. Uh, he's locked up for good. And then he does uh, say that. Yeah. Drake yeah. says they locked him up for good this time. 
Yep, and then Herb shows up with who, Mike? Thug Neanderthal is back, but um, he's not the Thug Neanderthal we met a half hour ago. Nah, he's got the Herb shirt on and everything, man. <laughs> and he's very and he's very well spoken too. He has yep. a job. Yep, <laughs> he, he's working but, at Quackerware now. Yep, and he gives a whole spiel, and he's got all the different Quackerwares balanced on his hands. He's like, Drake says, I think I liked him better before. Yeah, he can't and, deal with a Herb 2.0. No, not two, <laughs> no, not two Herbs. And, you know, guys, if you want to see Herb actually at his day job, we have a while to it. But we're getting to an episode where we find out what Herb really does during the day. Mm-hmm. And um, we we learn all about the Quackerware eventually. But um, anyway, yeah, that's the episode. I love Adopticon. I really, really do. Like you said, it's not top tier because I can't put it over my absolute favorites. Mm-hmm. Um, but oh man, I just love watching this one. It's so so funny. Yeah. So how many gas gun canisters are you gonna uh, gas gun canisters are you gonna give this one, Mike? You may be surprised how high I'm gonna rate this. I'm no, actually I'm, gonna, surprised. I'm actually gonna give it a four. Oh, okay. Because okay. it's an example. I mean, episodes like Nega Duck, and in a few episodes from now, we're going to do the Negaverse episode. Mm-hmm. I give those episodes, spoiler alert, I give them fives because everything works, including the animation. Mm-hmm. But this one makes up for the Sun Wu animation. It's so well written. It's so funny. You mm-hmm. know, everything out of every character's mouth is just gold. Okay. And I love it. I mean, definitely a four-star episode. I really enjoy watching it. Um, How about you? I'm giving it a three and a half, man. Uh, it, you know, just like you said, you, you of course it can't compete with like the Justice Ducks and episodes like that. There's just, there's just no way. You know, the Haunting of Mr. Banana Brain. It can't oh, compete. Yeah. yeah, it can't compete with that. But the flow of it from the very get-go with that that court scene, this episode never lets up. It really doesn't have like a uh, a scene where it's like, oh my god, this scene's just dragging, or it, no, it constantly flows really well. It's a really good episode. It's one of those episodes when a lot of people who just like, hey, tell me your top five or top ten episodes of Darkwing, and after they watch them because they don't want to watch all of them, this is another one. The next ones, once you get past those top tiers, you know. You know, I think I get what you were saying before. This isn't a Tuscanini episode. Because Mm -hmm. those episodes are about him filming his crimes, always something movie-related. This Mm -hmm. just happens to be a good episode that just happens to have Tuscanini in it. Yeah. You know, because he's not, he has no cameras come out. He doesn't say cut to print. He doesn't have, he's not bringing movie monsters to life. He's not, none of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But he's just being, he's just being a hammy, a fat hammy walrus in a really funny episode. Yeah. And I think it's better for it. If every Tuscanini episode could have been this funny, I wish they would have done more with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, th- this is a solid episode, definitely. It's, it's very solid. It works. Um, we didn't get no interest except that at the beginning. He started the entrance, right? Darkwing, yeah, I had to cut it off. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Goslin was flowing. Uh, Herb and Binky bring some comedy into it. There's no honker, unfortunately, but overall, man, it's a good episode. And then, like you said, Tusker Nini just makes jokes of the Megavolt and Bushroot uh, costumes. You know, like it's just hilarious. Like, come on, really, Tusker Nini? That's what you're it's, gonna try? <laughs> it's actually funny. The only other two episodes Steve Robert wrote was a Tusk was a Bushroot and a Megavolt episode. <laughs> Yeah, and then, you know, the gag of uh, Darkwing going through the dog, the fence, the alligator, the jungle, the the, the Sahara Desert, it's just hilarious. And the fact, you know, that they made him go through all that, it's done really quick. So it's not that like taking have, up, yeah, it's not taking well, so much of the episode, you know? That could have been the one point in the episode where the whole thing died. Yeah. If that was done in, a, in any other way, I think it would have failed. Because my daughter was like, what?! That's silly. And if it wasn't done as funny and as fast, mm-hmm. like him coming in with a snake wrapped around me being eaten by the dog, I mean, that's funny. Yeah. But if they had done it a different way, yeah, that would have crashed and burned during the climax. We didn't want that happening at the end, but they pulled it off. Yeah. And and I like the very end. I, I mentioned it earlier when Tusker Nini uh, realized he should have just shot the bazooka at the sealed uh, tunnel. And they could have yeah. got away, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. So I thought yeah. that worked. And then you got the the thug ne- ne- Neanderthal 
that worked. Man, the episode's solid, man. This is a I solid mean, even, episode. Even little things, I hope we didn't mention when uh, Drake says he smells a rat, and Goslin pulls out a mouse, and she goes, aw, can I keep him? Mm-hmm. And Drake's like, that's not what I meant. And no, you can't. <laughs> like, every little line of dialogue is funny. Like, one more thing. I mean, like, Jim has this great line. When Drake is hit by a wrecking ball, he goes right through the closet door, and he goes, by the way, I booby trap the door. <laughs> and I, I cannot re- replicate that, but it's just a great line reading from Jim. Like, yeah. like I said, Kenneth Mars, everything Tuscanini says is funny. Mm-hmm. And I would never have said that in any other Tuscanini episode. You know how I feel about his other episodes. Oh, yeah. This one I love. And okay. he's in it. Mm-hmm. You know? It's great. Very solid episode. All right. So that's Adopticon, Mike. What we got next? Well, let's dip a little bit into what I think might be my least favorite ABC first season episode, unfortunately. Um, Bad Tidings. Okay. Uh, it's our last major Steel Beak episode for a very long time. Mm-hmm. And eh, not a favorite of mine. Um, but after that one, man, you guys, I mean, guys, tune in for that one. We got some fantastic ones coming up after that. Oh, yeah. You know? I got my boy coming back. Woohoo! Yes, right after that. <laughs> and more Megavolt and more Gizmoduck and more Negaduck and we got some after the after next week's we have some all time classics coming up. We're in we're in classic territory. I might okay. even I might even be close to saying we're in we're in some masterpiece ter- territory coming up. We really are, and we just have to get through bad tidings. I mean, mm-hmm. enjoy Steelbeak one last time for a while, you know. Mm-hmm. But that's it. That's next week. Bad tidings and um. I think we're good. We did our shout outs. We did where we can find us. Anything else, Will, for tonight? No, nah, man, that's it. Just, you know, if you guys who are following us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, we might have already done some of this, but if we haven't finished, uh, we're going to be doing these giveaways and stuff. Remember, we, we record these early, so they might have some of them already done, but I want to spread the love because, you know, we got some Instagram followers that are dedicated to us. We got some that are on YouTube only, some on Facebook. And then we got the Jonathan Beltrans who just follow us everywhere. So, yeah, (laughs) you know, so, yeah, man, Uh, mad love to everybody. Y'all keep following us. Spread the love. Give us some reviews uh, up on Apple or Stitcher or Spotify, wherever you are, man. Give us some reviews because that keeps boosting us up and it helps us get on the front page of all these other sites that do podcasts and stuff. So, uh, guys, that's it. Yes, like especially on iTunes and YouTube. Please, that's like those are the two most important places I'd say to rate and review us. That helps a lot. Okay, well, guys, that's it for this episode. And remember, yep. stay dangerous. Have a great night. Good night, y'all. Bye.